go live. Hello, everybody. We are live. <laughs> and welcome back, Vanessa Contlin. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, I'm so glad to be back. I really miss this time together every week. I missed you too. It is so good to have you back on another Wine Wednesday with Wine Access. Um, oh, look at all of you people coming in. It is so good to see you. The people are here. They are saying hi. And hi. It is great to see everybody. Yeah, Vanessa's back. Um, <laughs> and, and, and today, um, today I am very happy to, uh, be, you know, trying these two that we're going to taste and we're going to be talking about, um, sweet versus fruity. So we're, we're just like, I, I I'm, I'm very intrigued by the two wines that we picked. Um, so you're going to have to tell us what's going on I, yet. I will so yeah so we actually like there's a method to the madness that that is wine wednesday I actually think about <laughs> it's true yeah we do we do because I'll, I'll text i'll text you and be like mm -hmm. okay here's our selections mm -hmm. because it was true guys we did i i posted on instagram the big picture i put all the wines on the floor <laughs> i love that and, that's awesome <laughs> yeah and and then um and then you were like well, why don't we do this sweet versus fruity and residual sugar thing? And I was like, yeah, that sounds good to me. So, so in a nutshell, and then we're going to like explore this through tasting is I think one of the things that really um, can confuse people and then sometimes lead to them not being able to explain what they really want in a wine or what they really like mm -hmm. is the difference between a wine that's fruity or and sometimes like in wine speak, we say fruit forward. Yes. Versus actual sweet wine. So, so we have two wines today that I chose that I think will illustrate this. One which is very fruity and fruit forward. Yes, eight years in the desert, which is a red blend, mm -hmm. um, California red wine. And then I have a Riesling from Germany. Mm -hmm. Uh, Spetleys, and I'll go into what, what, what does that mean, and how do you pronounce it, and and um, all that uh, when we taste it. But which actually has residual sugar. So before we dive in, you know, just like refresher to fermentation is, or like what makes wine wine is well, we start with grapes, which have sugar in them because they're a fruit, right? So they've ripened over the the course of the um, of the vintage. So, you know, we harvest in the fall. So depending on the region and, and the weather that year, but you know, you can start anywhere from even August for something like sparkling wines where you want a lot of really high acidity, um, you know, into let's say like October, November. In mm -hmm. some cases are people making um, some very sweet wines, they might even harvest in December. So, wow. so, so, but we're harvesting in the, you know, generally the, the late summer or the fall yes. um, for the most part. And fermentation is very, actually very simple. It's kind of magical, but it's actually very simple, which is yeasts are present naturally, um, or you can also, um, we call it inoculating. So the winemaker can add yeast to start it if he or she desires. Um, yeah. But basically the yeast eats the sugar in the grapes. And then the two byproducts of that are alcohol and CO2. Now, in most wines, the CO2, it just, it dissipates, you know, in some cases, like in some sparkling wines, it actually can get bottled in, in the wine. Um, but, but that's what happens. But um, in some cases, there are wines that are actually made, and I'm, I'll go into it when we taste the sweet wine, yeah. that, that don't have all of the sugars fermented out. So if all of the sugar is fermented out, you're left with a dry wine. But a dry wine can still give the impression of sweetness if it's very fruity. Okay. So if you think about like a ripe piece of fruit, like you have I've got these like beautiful peaches here. 
um, today, you know, it can be if you have a peach, you know, um, and it and it's very ripe. It can it can um, it's very fruity, right? But in in a wine, sometimes there's no sweet actual sweetness, but you still get that fruity because it was picked when it was ripe. Got it. The That's fermentation has actually has removed the sugar. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Does that make sense at home, guys? Because I, I, that's so cool. It's really, yeah. Okay, makes sense. Okay. So that was that was the theme. It's very simple, but it's also like really important. I think I I really love to um to 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 encourage learning on this because what I really want is for someone to know like if I go and ask you know at my retailer or I'm at a restaurant and I want to order something that I like, am I asking for it in a way that sort of makes sense in like a wine person's brain? Right. Yeah, okay. makes sense. Cool. We're people just like you, but sometimes, you know, we need help speaking the same language, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is why we're here, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So I'm kind of mixing things up. So often yeah. um, when we've tasted white and red, we've done the white first and the red second because of tannin, but today, because there's sugar in the white wine, it's hard to taste something dry after you taste something sweet. Mm -hmm. We're gonna taste the red first. Does that seem okay? Sounds good to me. Been looking forward to this one all day. <laughs> it has been a day. I'm very excited. Okay. See, and you have your wine open. Yes. Okay. I do. So, so this wine's called Eight Years in the Desert. Such a cool. And name. it's made by um, someone named uh, Dave Finney is the winemaker. And uh, if anyone's ever heard or had of the wine called The Prisoner, which is oh. sort of very famous yeah um uh he he that was his wine that was his brand but he's he he has since sold it okay. which i'm mentioning because it relates to the name so basically when he sold his brand the prisoner which was a it has it was also a red blend with symphondol which it has um he had to sign an agreement with who bought it saying i won't make symphondol for eight years but he loves Zinfandel. So he, when he finally was through his eight years where he had to like lay low making Zinfandel, um, he founded this brand called Eight Years in the Desert to talk about his eight years where he was not allowed to make that wine. Yeah. I love that, okay. So, so Dave's style is kind of that more, when I was talking about like fruitiness, you know, or fruit forward, his style tends to be one that is kind of like riper, richer, fruitier right so um so this is like yeah you yeah. don't even have to you don't even have to stick your nose into the glass to smell those fruits just bursting out of here like it's, exactly. it's bursting out as soon as you pour it this is yeah yeah yeah, yeah so oh. i think it's it's almost got that like um you know if you took a, a ripe berry and you like gush it a little bit oh. so you, you oh. know you like so it's like it's ripe but you kind of break the skins it's like very Forward is the word that I like to use. Very fruit forward. What a good description. Like bursting the berry. Like yeah, like just kind of. Um, so it's it's four different grape varieties in this. So it's Zinfandel, Syrah, Grenache, and Petite Syrah. And that might sound confusing because I said Syrah twice, but Syrah and Petite Syrah are actually two different grapes. No, Petite Syrah is not a smaller version of Syrah. It's actually a different, <laughs> <laughs> which is very confusing, but it's not the same. <laughs> okay, so what is the difference? Oh, they're different. They're, di they're different varieties. P Petite Syrah, I tend to get more like red fruit, tannin um, structure. Syrah has more like, for me, like blue fruit, smokiness, perfume, okay. violets. Um, but in general, would you agree, like, if this is very, like, just tons of, like, very juicy fruit, right? We should taste it since we've been talking about it. Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. So to me, this tastes really fruity, which might make some people inclined to say this wine is sweet, but it's actually not so yes <clears throat> the some wines some wines can be what we call like commercially dry and maybe there's just a, like a little touch so this is what i would call like if there's anything in this it's it's minimal 
Um, but it's definitely fruity. It's got um, that sort of feeling of viscosity almost, you know, sort of round and rich, which again can kind of fool you into, into thinking there's like, oh, this is a sweet wine. Like there is, you know, mm. some sweet fruit notes to it, but. Yep. It's just that you can really taste the, the you can taste the sweet fruits, but it's dry wine. So you're, you're tasting like the blackberry and the, the blueberry or, or, you know, yeah. raspberry. I mean, it's, it's all there, but it is, it's, it's completely dry. Right. And I, I was, I, I, you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say like blackberry, blueberry, for sure. Just like mixed berries, plum even, I think in this, uh, in this wine. Um, but it's very, when I use that word, like fruit forward, or sometimes I'll say this wine is like fruit driven. Um, yeah. it, this is an example of that where some wines that we've tasted have been had more like savory notes to it. You know, sometimes I'll go off on weird tangents about like olives and bramble and green herbs and stuff. Not, not with this wine, right? No, this, no. Is, this is, this is just fruit driven. Like the fruit is driving this car. Mouth watering fruit goodness. <laughs> My, man. But it's so true. I think the best thing you said was how it just if you took, if you, uh, you know, the, the fruit when you burst a, uh, uh, yeah, it's the same, you know what I'm saying, you said it way better than me. Yeah. But. I, I think I used the, the very technical word, gush. Gush. <laughs> gushing. This is though, it is gushing fruit. Who's, who's having this at home? Uh, Tiffany's having this. Tiffany, um. It's you. Yeah. Yeah. Tiffany, what, um, what do you think of this? I'm just looking at the comments now. I haven't looked at, them. but oh hi guys! Oh my mom's here. My brother, hey the fam, missed you, Vanessa. By the way, oh. um, <clears throat> you know, oh Maddie, you you have the Riesling in the fridge. Cool. Oh, it's awesome. Oh, Sean is here. This is great. Hey Faye, what's up? Miniature Missy, I love it. Everyone's here, by the way. This is, this is awesome. Nice. We're all here. Coming yeah. out. Cool but... guys. Okay. Um, I love this wine, by the way. It's, I think it's delicious too. It's, it's not a shy wine. Right? No. It's very like powerful and bold and rich. And, um, it really like makes an impression. It doesn't make you work for it. It's like, wow, I'm like, I'm here. I think if he spent eight years in the desert, he had to come back with something like this. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> been a sad eight years yeah <laughs> you guys see the label by the way i just i don't know can really I... pretty, isn't it yeah mm -hmm. i like that a lot he's but... also very known for dave finney is who i'm referring to who is the winemaker and the owner of this brand he's known for like really interesting labels like very designy arty um not your typical not your typical wine wine labels and yeah i think this is really pretty it's really eye-catching and different and it's got a different feel to it also we yeah it does. It has this it's like like bottles, but like it, it does have like it's almost this. like it's like a netting or something. It's yeah. It's it's really really cool. Um, so so that was my example of fruity. I hope and, that and it's and it's really fruity. And do you guys get that at at home? Like fruity, but not sweet. Do you do you all uh, like get what we're talking about there? I think I think we do now because okay. okay. Yeah. This is. Does anyone have any questions about that? Okay, so Tiffany said my kind of fruity. <laughs> it's, it's true. Like I, 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 I love this. Like Good. Good. just the 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 wines that I've had that have been like this from Wine Access. Like are they are, whew, they all burst. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we like to make an impression. Um, cool. <laughs> should we should we try the uh, the uh, other wine, which uh, I'm not going to say five times fast because there's a lot of German consonants in here, but. Yes, wait, I got to go get it because it's. Okay, it's all right. Chillin'. It's chilling. It's chilling. It's chilling. Okay. <laughs> it's chilling by itself in the fridge. <laughs> it's literally chill. It's, no, no, it's literally chilling. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it, this is what it looks like. So 
as I mentioned, this is um, this is uh, our Reese. So this is Riesling. I don't think we've tasted Riesling together. We have never done Riesling. So Riesling. okay. So while you're while you're opening it, which shouldn't take long because there's actually a, it's a it's a screw cap. But um, uh, so Riesling is a really fascinating variety. It's it's one where like um, it's like people who love it like get obsessed with it like it's one of those you know um but it, it's a it's a really versatile variety so it's very um it's known for being aromatic so you can get lots of like depends on where it's grown it can be anything mm -hmm. from like you know a green apple um uh fruit all the way to like honeysuckle and very floral you know in a riper area sometimes it can have like peach and pineapple but it's very aromatic like perfumed variety it's also a variety known for really, I, I describe it as like sort of racy acidity, like really zingy acidity. So high acid. Mm -hmm. uh, but something else that is very, um, I think, interesting about Riesling is it really you can vary in style from bone dry to very, very sweet. So it's made in a lot of different styles. Um, okay. Um, so we have a sweeter version. So um, again, so the producer's called Dr. Polly Bergweiler. So um, yeah, I know, right? I, I went for it. So it's 2016. It's got a lot of really scary words on here, but essentially uh, the vineyard is Sonninger, which means um, sun, uh, sundial. It's a really amazing yeah. vineyard, the way it sort of wraps around the hillside. So it's, and it captures the sunlight, which aids ripening because this is from the Mosul in Germany, which is a, not a warm region. So in, in some regions, like the way the vineyard is situated in order to catch the sunlight is very important and can be the difference between like a very highly regarded vineyard and an okay vineyard is okay. What, we, what we call the aspect or the how does it face towards or not um, the sun. So this is called sundial. So it really captures this beautiful. Um, and then this other really scary word here. So Riesling is on, it says Riesling. And then it says Spätlese. So in Germany, there's lots of different terms for sweetness. Um, you know, trocken can be very dry. Cabinet, you're starting to get sweet. It's just Spätlese. And then beyond that, there's Auslese. And then all the way up to like ice wine and trocken beer and else, else. It's anyway, you get the way. It's, there, there's lots of, of versions of sweetness. So this is, um, Spätlese literally means picked late. So, oh, okay. so, so this, the fruit was allowed to get, you know, fairly ripe. So Spätlese is this, is basically it's the style and it can be an indication of sweetness. Did I totally lose you? Is this no, no, no. So does every Riesling, I guess, does every Riesling have that descriptor like, Great question. No, German. This is specific to Germany, and Austria has some terminology that's the same, but but no, this is it, like you can get Riesling from a lot. I mean, you can get it from Washington State. You can get it from um, from Australia. You can, you know, there are other regions, but that sort of specific wine terminology is for there. Now it's not protected though. I, I don't know if that was the question, but you know, we've talked about how you can't say like champagne, this is champagne, if it wasn't made in champagne, like you could call it this style and that's not like a legal thing though. But, yeah. but this is very specific to, to, to Germany. Can I just show you guys how it says that that is the word spet, spet laser, but that yeah. is how you spell it. I'm not, I'm not trying to like call you a name or insult you. It's called <laughs> spet laser. Germany. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. So can I, I have like a quick little show and tell. Uh, so I got the craziest glasses as a gift. Can you kind of see what the shape? So, um, I, I know I, I'm just getting used to them. So this was uh, when 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 you pass the MW or the Master of Wine exam, when you, you when you become a Master of Wine, um, Riedel, the famous wine glass company, they give you glasses as like a current congratulations. The um, least that they can do for you. So I completely forgot that this was going to happen, and a bunch of these glasses show up uh, at my house. So. It's called, I think the series is they're new. It's called like Wings. <laughs> and this is, a, I don't know if you can see, like here's in relation, this was my Bordeaux glass. Do you see how <laughs> great glasses? 
And this was made for Riesling. It like says Riesling on the stem. Oh, like, really? Yes. So, which isn't that weird. Like I'm used to drinking white wines out of smaller glasses, but the way this is shaped, because it is a very aromatic variety, it's going to kind of like, it has this like wide bowl down here. So like when you put your nose in it, you're going to have sort of a, a stronger impression of, of the aromas, but it's kind of wild, right? I'm like- it Looks like an alien wine glass. Like it's like the really like the wine wine glasses they're using on other planets for their tastings. <laughs> well, I put I put Cabernet in it when I first got it. I was like, it's so it's like I'm used to big glasses like this being for like Bordeaux varieties, and then I like paid attention to this stem, and it actually says Bordeaux Riesling. So there you go. I love that. Well, well this is an experiment. I barely use these. So cool show and tell. Cool show and tell. Okay. So I feel like maybe we should taste this first and then and then talk about the sweetness. Is that okay? And I'm gonna encourage you, as I always do, to like really swish this one around because oh, okay. it's gonna have some sort of new different things for us to talk about in terms of wine. Okay. 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 Oh. So do you get this? So there's still a good amount of acidity, right? So like my mouth is watering, but I don't know about you, but when I sweet actual sweetness, I, it's much more of like an immediate impression. I sort of taste it like right up at the yep. front. Yep. 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 You see how that's different than the fruity wine. The fruity wine did not have this. This has about they don't say, but it's probably about 60 to 70 grams of, of residual sugar in the wine. And so for context, Coca-Cola is around 135. Okay. It's, so, not, it's not that sweet. Right. But, but we, it's still sweet. Yeah. Because like in terms of, you know, we call a wine that would have like two grams per liter would be like completely bone dry. There's like no perceptible sugar actually, like when you taste it. But this, at like again, sixty to seventy ish. Um, it's it's actual, but that acidity kind of balances it out. That's what's so cool about Riesling because it can be actually sweet, but not be like cloying and heavy. But I want to hear what you have to say because we I, I, we haven't tasted Riesling together. No, and I'm really not familiar with it. Um, I honestly thought it was going to be sweeter. So I, I, I was a little scared of this one when you... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I was, I, I, I was uh, actually like extra scared of it when you said we've tasted second because I was like, oh man, this is going to be like... Yeah. Um, um, I won't ask you to do it now, but like if you want to sometime just to see why I did that, or like if anyone at home wants to try this, if you taste this actual sweet wine and then you taste a dry wine after, it makes the dry wine taste kind of astringent and bitter because that sugar is kind of already on your palate. I mean, you can go for it if you this want. Would taste bitter now? I bet it would, it'll taste dry. You know what? Let's do it. I'm going to yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see what that does. Sure. Yeah. Does it? Yeah, right? The fruit tastes, it doesn't taste as ripe. What? Yeah, totally different. This is why, guys, you always listen to Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. This, yeah. it literally lost all of its fruit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, see, I do actually have a method to my madness. I do. Yeah. That's wild <laughs> <laughs> so so the thing about about riesling is because it has again it can they can be different in style so i don't want to like by any means indicate that all riesling is sweet because lots of rieslings are completely dry this one i know has some residual sugar based on what i know about germany and such but Lisa, um that the fact that this has a little bit of sweetness makes it really a great pairing to spicy foods Ah, because spice is, is 
is can can be hard with wine because it can also make the wine like in a very dry wine we don't have we, we we can't do this experiment right now but like if you taste something really spicy and then let's say you taste like a sancerre or like you know a, a dry high acid something like a sauvignon blanc it will actually make the food taste hotter like spicier hotter um so it's it it accentuates the spice whereas you want something that kind of like balances it um so this is a great pairing for that when can we do a pairing one day oh i love that idea okay let's we'll we'll what okay we'll text we'll figure this out <laughs> right okay. like, how how much fun would that be if we if we were pairing food and wine together guys right like that i love it Okay, we're do we're totally doing that. All right, I'm gonna like now my wheels are turning, but I'll I'll like turn them off for now. And we'll I know we we gotta figure this out one day. Yeah, like one yeah. day when we actually like meet in person, we're gonna. <laughs> it's so weird that I have but I feel like I know you, but we actually haven't met. I know, isn't it crazy? Like... <laughs> <laughs> this so is why the, this is why the internet is a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah really, it really is. Man. Um. So that was my theme. And I thought if you wanted me to geek out for just a sec or a minute or two, um, I could just kind of talk about how wines can be sweet versus dry. Why can wines be sweet versus Like how does that happen basically? Yes. You know, okay. So, so there's a couple different ways. So I'm going to start with one that is sort of, um, it's not how this one was made. So, so basically, you know, when we were talking about fermentation before, it's the yeast, sitting the sugar in the grapes, like for most wines, like table wines, you know, things you would put on uh, the table at dinner, all the fermentable sugars have been consumed by the yeast, right? So you're left with a, a dry wine. Um, so there are, there are certain examples where a wine can be sweetened after fermentation. So the, the example I'll give is champagne. Okay. So again, I'm not saying that all champagne is. There are plenty of champagnes that um, that 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 aren't. We call that like non dosage or zero dosage or brut nature is a style. But basically, you know, they're at bottling after the second fermentation for traditional method like actual champagne or wine made in that. At bottling, they can add what's called dosage, and dosage can have a, a anywhere from a little bit to a lot of bit of sweetness. And the reason why that's done is um, Champagne is a very cool region. Um, there's a lot of acidity in the wines. In some cases, it almost needs a little bit of sweetness to like round out the palate. And it can really vary. So very sweet styles of Champagne used to be popular like back in the day. They're, they're it's much more rare now to actually have like a sweet Champagne. Yeah. But in some cases, there's like a little bit added and you won't even really notice it as actual sweetness, it just sort of makes the wine more complete. Okay. So that's an example of wine that's actually sweetened. So uh, another way to end up with a wine with, with actual residual sugar is to uh, like stop the fermentation. So if you just leave fermentation alone, the yeast are just gonna do their thing. They're gonna eat all of the sugar. And then, you know, again, you're left with the dry wine. If you stop that fermentation before the yeast has consumed all the sugar, well, then you're left with sugar in, in the wine. So one way to do that is an example like port. So in the case of port, it's the way that it's a, um, the fermentation is stopped is the addition of spirit. So, right. so yeast can only live uh, up to a certain degree of alcohol. So they're adding like a like an actual spirit uh, to mm -hmm. the fermentation. It kills basically it kills the yeast, and then you're left with a with port, which has you know around like 100 grams of uh, uh, per liter residual sugar ish, depending right. on the style. Um, that's another way. Um, so, but the the way that this is is somewhat similar. And then the fermentation was stopped, but not with spirit. So basically. You, the, usually it's a combination of, you know, if you cool it down, so chilling the tank, let's say while it's fermenting, in some cases adding something like SO2, which is a sort of winemaker's tool, and then filtration. And so they filter it 
to remove the yeast from that wine because there will be live yeast. You know, there can be could you don't want it to then like start from from fermentation later, like after right. the bottle, that would be bad. So so through these methods, they'll stop it, and that's how you can be left with a wine like this, which has residual sugar. Now the other thing about this wine that we haven't talked about is is the alcohol. So if you look at the label, it's only 7.5%. So very low, right? Yeah. Usually with wines, you know, like what what I, you know, a, a sort of low alcohol wine might be, um, you know, 11%. Yeah. You know, up to, let's see. Oh, that's... So the red wine for context is 15.6. This is only 7.5. So, like 15.6. Yeah. It's a bit, it's not shy. This is not a shy wine. Um, but, but so, like, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, but, but then, like, so, so what? You know, like, so, so, how, what? So, you have the sugar, but then why is the alcohol low? Well, the yeast didn't finish doing their job. So, if they had continued fermentation, they would have produced more alcohol as they had consumed more sugar but the fermentation was stopped. So there was sugar left in the wine, but the alcohol was lower. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right, there you go. I, it was probably more than a minute, but. It was like, you know, four to five, but you're fine. I'm not counting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we do have, we do have questions. Okay. Uh, I gotta scroll back. Hold on a second. Okay. I saw questions. I really did. Uh, Max, did you hear the news about um, the top fifty? Oh, top fifty. No. What is this news? Oh, so so Wine Access was named one of the top fifty wine retailers in the United States by Wine Enthusiast Magazine. Congratulations, you. everybody! Everyone, I mean, I want to see, I want to see some some <laughs> clapping emojis and whatnot for uh, Vanessa and Wine Access. Top fifty wine retailers top in 50. the U.S. And, and, and there were only five selected in the online category, and we were one of them. What? I you know we we had no idea. We didn't know we were being considered. So like literally, some, someone sent me an email and was like, "Hey, congrats on!" I was like. What? And I mean, it. I, I. I mean, to me, it's obvious that you guys deserve this because I've never um, had a wine website uh, as I've, I've. I've never seen a wine website as good as Wine Access. I've never seen a wine retailer find the amount of high quality wines that you guys find, uh, and for the prices that you find them. I mean, it's just like. Thank you. It, anyway. Congratulations. Thank you. Really cool. Uh, you have um, a lot of congrats in the comments, I should tell you. Thank you. A lot. Well, company-wide effort. Yes, congrats to the whole team. I mean, this is oh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, 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 Heavenly Imagining said, Vanessa, you have a way of breaking the wine talk down into easy to follow language, so. Thank you. And uh, Maddie, what's up, Maddie? Uh, at this point, I couldn't live without Wine Access or HelloFresh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Important, but it's true. Maddie, you had a question, right? Didn't I see it? Um, I saw it somewhere. Wait, Maddie, you're actually drinking this Riesling right now, right? Um, I'm still getting, like, this thing over here, in here still, from the Riesling. Yeah. Right? Sweetness, yeah. It's, sure. it's, um... I feel like it, I taste like peach. I don't know if that's right, but totally like white peach. There, there is some like subtle citrus for sure. There's something um, that like with with riesling from from this region, from the Mosul in Germany. That I, there's no other way for me to describe it, but like ethereal. Like on your palate, it sort of like does this, right? It kind of like like disappears up into the stratosphere somehow. I, look, I drank it all already. Oh, I love that. It's kind of so light and like, anyway. 
Which I did not think I would do because I was like, mm, Riesling. I know you were skeptical. I knew that. I don't know about that. I know. I know. Um, <clears throat> um, oh, actually, while I'm, while I'm thinking of this right now, guys, um, this uh, is actually in the wine club shipment. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. For the Wine Access Wine Club, which I will uh, post in the chat right now. There's the link to it. So this one was actually a wine club wine. Yeah, yeah. And um, I posted more about the wine club actually today on my Instagram. Uh, but it's it's a pretty amazing wine club, and and you know. Yeah, it's so it's um you know we we choose a theme every quarter, um, and then um. And then we also shoot videos. So like there's videos of us tasting the wines and talking about it. So like, if you want to watch something at home instead of reading, you can do that too. But, um, but yeah, the, you know, wine access, the, the club members, they get early access to, to the wines in the club before the rest of the, the members do. Um, but this one was in the la this quarter's um, club because we, the theme was winemaking techniques you know, things that can impact the style of the wine. So this was included to show what, what we're talking about here today, like, you know, residual sugar. Yeah, it's, yeah. So the wine club, um, that's the really cool thing is that there is a theme always with each uh, yeah. shipment. Um, and it's it's four bottles, uh, uh, four, six bottle shipments, and it's uh, 150 bucks plus tax shipping included, which is insane. Exactly. So, exactly right. um, it's a it's an amazing deal, guys. So if you are looking to join a wine club, this is obviously the one you should join. Come on. <laughs> um, Thanks. Yeah. So it's we we put a lot of thought into it, so it's it's fun. No, and it shows. I mean, you guys, it it, it really does show um, because you actually like how many uh, how many wines like do you taste to like then whittle it down into like the wine club like you, you taste what like thousands we taste literally thousands of wines a year thousands and thousands and thousands of wine yes yeah. it's a pretty cool job <laughs> like this this is just like a normal day like this is just like i need to get through these right taste these <laughs> <laughs> and like and then and then and then cut cut it way down you know because like right. we're very selective so right. yeah yeah that's pretty amazing our um, recycling is kind of out of control oh man i've been bringing down my recycling to oh yeah it is mm, yeah i can't and imagine because like i pour like a lot of wine ends up like getting poured down my drain because i can't well some of them you know we select the ones we like some of them i don't think are gonna make the cut it but even if i like it i mean there's only so much wine you know I have to show up and talk to you every week. <laughs> True. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. There's actually a lot of questions. <laughs> um, uh, what do I get to first, guys? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I guess, let's see. Shauna, um, Shauna wanted to know uh, what would you pair with these wines? Okay. Okay, so so the the white the the riesling definitely like spicy food like right. anything with some heat to it you know whether that's like it could be you know Thai or Vietnamese um, okay. Indian ooh Indian would be great with some Indian food but like something with some heat to it yep. would be my perfect pairing uh, with that the red because it's like it's bold and fruity um but it's like big and powerful i almost think like a braised like some like braised beef like short ribs yep would yep. be perfect yep 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 yep, yep. yep. awesome totally Thank or you. like even um like a cheddar i think would would go with that like a really sharp cheddar yep yeah that makes a lot of sense um okay cool thanks um <clears throat> What else do we have here? Uh, so, um, let, 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 ah, sorry, I'm yeah. trying to, I'm trying to I've find. Got, I have wine. I'm, I'm fine waiting. <clears throat> um. Oh, Maddie said she tasted honey. Uh, in the recent. Oh, oh totally. I think that's a great descriptor. Um, like I almost get on the nose this like kind of honeysuckle. Um, yep. did you ever? So, like, I grew up or like. 
you know, when you like, if you pick honeysuckle, did you ever do this and you kind of taste it? I know that, have you ever done that? Like with the flower? No. Okay. I just, okay. <laughs> it tastes like to me. Cause it's not like, <laughs> it, this is what I, this is research. It's research. Um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> Cause it's not as sweet as like, if you get like honey and it's in a jar. Yeah. And that's like really sweet. Like this yeah. has like sweetness, but it's, it's not, yeah. You know, let me tell you something. So <laughs> Maddie and, 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 and Shauna, they have done exactly what you have done. So you are not alone. Thank in that. you. Yeah. I, 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 I used to do that all the time. I missed out, I guess. Where did you do that? Well, I grew up in Texas. Uh, so I was in first grade, so I think mostly there, and then okay. I was on the East Coast. But anywhere that has honeysuckle, and you're a kid, and you want to put things like taste flowers, or not a kid. kid. <laughs> I never did. I get you know. I was doing other things. Uh, you know, it's like yeah, it's really tasty. That's cool. <laughs> I was playing. Uh, I was playing baseball and football in my backyard by myself. That that was what I did. <laughs> I did. I, that is literally what I did as a kid. I had a big imagination. I mean, I still do. So I would, I would like create games like in my head. Oh yeah. yeah. I would, I would like, like create shows. Like I would come up with like a play or a theme oh, and yeah. just like do it all by myself and yeah. make my parents watch it. And... Oh, well, I did that a lot too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> our parents had to put up with it with a lot of our, our, yes. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's true. <laughs> we <laughs> oh man we got some nice wines to enjoy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if my mom is still yeah. watching she's probably like oh yeah i've seen all this yeah um <laughs> gosh where where did we just go with this i don't know <laughs> eating flowers childhood memories <laughs> oh wait i actually have a question, I have a question. okay <laughs> um wait where was it? Miniature Missy. I saw it. There it is. Boom. Okay. I knew I saw this. I've been holding off on this question, hoping I'd figure out the answer myself, but how is it that the wines don't alter the integrity of the other glass when tasting more than one from the same glass? Oh, but then you said, oh, wait, how are we tasting it from two glasses? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> recommend that you taste if, in separate glasses i with these two definitely yes. yes yeah because they're so different and because of the the residual sugar uh in the in the riesling but you know if i'm sometimes if i'm like tasting a red wine and then i'm gonna taste another red wine and then we taste another red wine and i know they're all dry like sometimes i'll just you, you know like and when i taste wine as a professional like to assess them i'm, I'm actually not drinking them when i like taste it and then i spit it out um but like so i'll so i'll use the same glass but, but these are so different stylistically that, yeah, I would definitely recommend that. You are not the dumbest. Stop, Minnie. No, there's no, there aren't any dumb questions. Come on. Um, I, 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 I have a question. So when you have to spit out the wine. Yes. Does it ever make you like really sad? <laughs> or are you just, okay, yeah. Yes, it does. It really does. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, yes. I have, I have probably spit out more wine than a lot of people drink in their whole life. That's really <laughs> sad. That's so sad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just, I, I'm just, you know, I was just wondering. I was yeah. just picturing, I mean, I was just picturing my, myself doing it and, and just I, kind of like. Yeah. <sighs> I know. I know. Sometimes it's hard, but you know, it is a job. I mean, I, I, love it obviously but like you know it's my job to to do this so i you know have to keep it together <laughs> uh exactly right because if you keep drinking it then you know oh yeah. wait i got a question here oh, okay so oh wait i have like another uh, okay so i'm gonna i have a sip of this right okay i i will too when is it okay for me to start up. drinking this again uh, when will my taste buds return to like Ooh. neutral you know what I, it can take a while. Um, I mean, you could do something like, like eat a neutral cracker, you know, like, um, a, but, but you know what a great way to reset your palate is? Champagne. 
true. It's true. Cause it's like that the acidity is so bright, you know, it like kind of cleanses your palate. So that's actually my recommendation. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Champagne. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. I mean, uh, you know, like it really makes sense. It's so like refreshing and then, you know, like you have the, the bubbles and it just kind of like, it just kind of makes it a clean slate again, but. What if, if I don't have, okay. Yeah, but... even like, you know, the, um, what are they called? The crackers that are very, I don't know why I'm blanking on them, but they're, they basically like have no flavor. <laughs> they're kind of a, a vessel for like yeah. other things. Like water, water, crackers. water, water crackers. Yeah, yeah. Something yeah. like that, you know, um, can, can, can help. Okay. Yeah. Water crackers. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes a lot of sense to me because you know, I'm going to go back to this. Yes. Which is delicious. So yeah. yeah, I would do something in between to, to so th so that you can enjoy it at, at its at its fullest. Um. Yes. Does water help? Uh, asks Shauna. Um. It can. It can. Yeah. I mean, it can. But um. But something either that will actually like kind of soak up some of this sort of you know like the, that's why the water crackers are good. Um. Or like with high acidity. And if you didn't have champagne, you could do it with like like just rinse with another like a dry, you know, um, like a Sauvignon Blanc, something like that, like a Sancerre, like just rinse, cleanse the palate. And like the key there is like the acidity is what I'm thinking of. Cause you know, the acidity kind of is refreshing and then your mouth will start watering and kind of it just like clears it up. Um, okay, cool. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, will we ever do a podcast together? Has a, has a question here. Yes. Um, Wine Access actually is a podcast. Which yeah, is, we're launching a podcast. Which is launching. coming out. Uh, so, I mean, you, you may see me on there one day. I don't know. We'll see oh, what happens. It would be an honor. I would love that. It, wine, yeah, Wine Access Unfiltered podcast. So we started recording them. We haven't released any. It'll be released um, sometime in July. Cool. But, but like the whole theme is guests who like wine but aren't wine professionals, who aren't in the wine business. So people who like you who like really enjoy wine and are curious and love to talk about it. But, um, you know, we're not, we're not on that particular, we, we do talk to a lot of winemakers and stuff like on Instagram or Facebook, we post stuff, but this particular medium is meant for like non wine professional guests. Yeah. I love it. That that's awesome. I would, I would love to be on that. And that's, that's, uh, that's with Amanda. Amanda McCrossan. Yeah, exactly. Amanda McCrossan, you guys saw her. Um, if you were watching on Instagram, I, I went on, on her show on Instagram. Uh, she's got her Instagram name is Somme Vivant. So I'm sure you guys, I know a lot of you guys were there for that, which is, yeah. she's awesome. So yeah. So yeah, you know, I'll be, uh, yeah. You'll, you'll hear me in audio form at some point. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. So yeah. like, what did, what did you think of this theme? Was this, was this a good theme? I love this theme. I think, you know, especially because when people say that's a sweet wine, right? You, you know, that can mean a lot of things. And I think we have figured out the difference between what is sweet and what is fruity or fruit forward. Yes. Um, I, it makes sense to me. Does it make sense to you guys? I mean, I, I, uh, yeah, because I, I think it really makes a lot Good. of sense. I, that makes me happy. Yeah. Cause I want, you know, that's kind of my, that's my mission is to like help everyone feel empowered, you know, to enjoy wine at the fullest. And, and that really like being able to describe what you like is really key to that. Yes. Because, you know, and that's always been like my thing when I go into a restaurant and I'm like, they come over and ask you what kind of wine you like. And you're like, uh, mm -hmm. You know, and to be able to actually um, articulate it is is really neat now. Maybe it'd be fun. Should I like, okay, so if I was walking in a restaurant as a consumer and I wanted a wine like this, so I would probably, and someone was like, hey, what do you, what do you want or what do you like? And that was my style. I would probably say like, I would like a rich, full-bodied red wine that's very fruit forward fruit driven, mm -hmm. what I would ask for. And this happens to be a red blend, but it doesn't, you don't necessarily have to ask for that. And then yep. if I wanted a wine like this, yep. I would probably ask for like 
a, a sweeter style of, of Riesling. It could be from Germany, right? This one happens to be, but like, you know, a, um, a, a wine with actual residual sugar, not just fruit, fruitiness. Um, and in this case, it's, it's low alcohol. So I might ask for like a low alcohol, sweet Riesling with residual sugar. And then I would get a bottle like this. Okay. Makes sense, guys? I mean, I mean yeah, <clears throat> it makes sense to me. Because that was always one of the things that I, I you know, when a, when a sommelier comes over to your table and, and they ask that question, you're like, uh, pressure and yeah. 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 And you're just like, uh, that one, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just, but <clears throat> to be able to just have a few keywords. Yeah. And you only have a few. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Then they can be like, okay. Right. This is the ones you're thinking of, and, and yeah, it's it's just really neat. Um, awesome, guys. Any other uh, any other questions that you have? Um, Lodi was wine region of the year a few years back, Kevin. Do you know anything about that? Well, Lodi, the wine region. I don't. I don't know which um, who named it wine region. Um, but but yeah. It's cool. Um, socially sanity takes over finance. Uh, okay, cool. I'm thinking about our pairings. I have to think about that. I really like that suggestion. That's a great suggestion. Yeah, we're gonna we'll, we're we'll gonna, figure it out. We're gonna do that one day for sure. Uh, and I think that. I mean, I think that'd be a, yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Oh, I know, I know. When we mentioned it, I, I, I saw the the um the chat going crazy about that. Everyone was just sort of like, yes, yeah. Yes. Well, that'll be fun. What we should do is um, we'll we'll put our heads together and then we can let people know in advance if they want to like not just taste the wine but like do the pairings. We can right tell them what to 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 buy or to make. Yeah. Before. Yeah. We'll do it. We'll do it. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Um, all right. Cool. So great yeah. to be back. <laughs> it was so good to have you back. We are, we are, uh, everyone really, um, look at this. Oh, yeah. Everyone's just like, oh, yeah. thank you. Uh, we, we, we love Vanessa. We do. <laughs> um, it's so good to, to have you back. And, uh, um, oh, okay. Yeah. And no, Miniature Missy, oh, the social anxiety takes over, and it's all, oh, when you're talking to a, a, a sommelier, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Right, yeah, no, that's true. But now, we don't have that anymore. Right. Because we got you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's great. Um, thank you. Uh, Lots of thank yous coming in. Maddie, thank you so much. Uh, for having me. And we'll be back next week, right? Yeah, sounds good to me. Right. Sounds That's good nice. to me. I'm going to go eat a, a, I guess, a water cracker. <laughs> then go back to the red, yes. So I can switch back to this. <laughs> Not that I didn't like this. No, it's just the progression. Yeah, if you're, if that's what you're going to drink tonight, you just want to. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? Like I could see myself having this with dinner and then maybe a little thing yeah. at the end of the- It's charming by itself too. Yeah. It doesn't have to be paired with spicy food. It's just that spicy no. food are so hard to pair with wines. And this is this is the answer. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, um, guys, I will hang out for a little bit more. Vanessa's yeah. on her way out now. On her way out. I'll see you next week. This was really fun. Yeah. Good day. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Love it. <clears throat> um, so here's a, isn't she the, like, don't you learn like a, a, a ton when she's here? It's, it's, so here's what I want to do. I want to grab a cracker because I actually do have cracker. Uh, just go get a cracker from the cabinet. I will eat said cracker. And then, <laughs> and then I will um, take this one, pour a little of this one, 
and then we'll go up to the uh, balcony. We'll chat for a little bit more. Sound good? <clears throat> good. You, you will hear bag crinkling as I go get cracker and you're gonna hear all this stuff, but, but I, gotta, I gotta get the taste back on this one. You know what I mean? You actually have to. Okay. B R B. That'll work. That'll work. Okay, I did it. <clears throat> I had um, I had a little of <clears throat> yum. Okay, filled this up a little bit. Now we can. Uh, nope, I don't have shoes on. I gotta go get some. I'm walking out there barefoot. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now that I had the cracker, I can actually. Oh man! <laughs> I can't really see right now, but we will. Whew. Man, that is bright. Okay. Here we go. Great. Okay. Okay. Hello, friends. What's up? So, um, I, okay. What I want to do now is <clears throat> taste the. Uh, Eight years in the desert and see what the deal is here. Did the cracker help? You know what I mean? All right, so let's go. Yep, let's just say yes. Mm. Well, that was good. Of course it did, Vanessa. She knows what she's talking about. Thank you, Dee Dee. I appreciate it. I love these nights too. It's so much fun hanging. Um, so that really did uh, bring a. Yeah, you just need a cracker, something like that. That's all you need, and it, it brought it all back. So. Cool is that. Uh, I like this wine a lot. Um, I know Tiffany, you're having it at home. I, I, I think the Riesling is, 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 I don't know, Maddie, you have the Riesling at home, but, uh, and I know I saw you say you were eating it with something that you probably didn't go as well. 
It's very sweet. Yeah. That's why I'm just back to this. And the difference between, you know, the sweet and the fruitiness that she's talking about, I think we understand it now, right? How the sweet is that added residual sugar, that, that added residual sugar, right? As opposed to a dry wine like this, which is bursting with those roots. Man, when she said that thing about the gushing, that is it. Matt, you had steak and lobster? Can I come over? <laughs> Maddie with the surf and turf tonight. I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh, wait, that was on HelloFresh? Because, you know, I, I did HelloFresh for like a while. Where was that on HelloFresh? I miss that. I got uh, I'm not, I'm not doing HelloFresh right now, so I, yeah, but like, that sometimes HelloFresh does some real good things. Like, was that on the, like, you pay a little extra for it? Because I know they have some items where you pay like $7.99 extra or whatever. So is it to celebrate your one-year engagement anniversary? I love this. Well, cheers to you guys. Congratulations. That's so cool. <laughs> is this guy really on his like speakerphone outside? Is that really necessary? Could we maybe not do that? <laughs> um, I see some questions about what is for dinner tonight. Um, uh, tonight is, uh, uh, chicken. Yeah. Chicken and, uh, like, uh, zucchini and, uh, stuff like that. So, which, uh, I would do, uh, as soon as I'm done, you know, or just tell them to, tell them to stop. <laughs> Oh man, that's good. Oh, I mean, I could get, I could get the entire conversation here. You know, it's like, um, tell him in your no interest in the chat, boys. Ooh, do I get really mean when when people comment in the, uh, in the chat during the quiz? Do I get like an extra mean? I get like, I get like extra, extra mean. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm ready to relax too, Tiffany. Trust me. Trust me. I really am. Thank you, Kimberly, what's up? I'm number one. Thank you. I love this. Bursting with fruit. Um, it's my teacher voice. I do, man. I get mad. Just follow the rules. It's written right behind me. You know what I mean? Um, come on. <laughs> uh, I broke my own rules last night. Well, I had to because the chat crashed and then I had to type in the answers. I know that was, that was unfortunate the way it ended yesterday. It's all good. It's all good. I am annoyed by it. I'm just sort of like. You can't follow the directions as written right behind you. <laughs> um, what I what? <laughs> oh, got your best score yet, Maddie? Um, by the way, Maddie, 
your uh, wine bar, uh, the wine bar sign that you got me is actually on my um, bar currently. So uh, I, uh, I can show you, but I got to go back inside. So, um, but yeah, it's on the, uh, it's on the uh, actual wine bar. So thank you. I can show you, do I have to go back inside right now? I can, I can show you. Okay, all right. Well, I can send you, I can send you like a little picture of it later. I'll show you. Yeah, yeah, we'll take a photo. Um, we are, uh, oh, hey, Heavenly Imaginings. So good to have you back in here, by the way. You haven't been to a while, I've been in a while. It's good to have Amanda back here. Amanda helping regulate things, you know, during our, especially during trivia work. <laughs> What's my plan the rest of the week, Zara? This is a good question. Um, I, I, I will have possibly another video this week. Um, thank you, Cassidy. Cheers to you. Uh, Wednesdays are better because we're all together. My plan the rest of the week is um, dependent on, I think, a number of things. If Disney comes out with any new information that I need to hop on live for um, to make a to make a video about um, or you know if I have to yeah I, I do have another um, old restaurant video that I have that I would like to do one of those old restaurant videos that I would love to do um, and other than that, I, I was thinking also about talking about the, uh, the NBA and Disney, um, because that's kind of a big thing right now, how the NBA is coming back and playing in Disney World. So, yeah. That's another thing I can talk about for a video. <clears throat> other than that, I don't, I don't know. There's not much else going on. It's still, I'm still just home. I'm not going out. Um, things are slowly opening here, but also our COVID cases are higher than ever. Same thing with Orange County. So it's just weird that everything is opening and uh, it's worse than it was like when we started this whole thing. So, you know. Do I see the beta registration system? What is that? I did not see anything. Cooking and drinking live stream. Yes, Didi. The NBA is assigning the Disney hotels based on seed rank. That is very true. That was the thing I was going to make my video about. I, I, I probably will, um, just because I think it's kind of fun for me. I did not see the beta reg the beta reservation side. I've not seen anything like that. Um, I mean, I know that they're gonna have one, but uh, you know, I haven't seen it. It's just, it's. It, I just you know I just, I just don't know how I feel about it all honestly right now. So, where did you see that, Maddie? Because I haven't seen anything like that. <clears throat> I really have not seen it. Uh, I got an email today from Disney that that I don't even know what email I got from Disney today. <clears throat> I got an email about Disneyland um, opening. That thing, the, the, oh, the email they sent today about Disneyland's opening. That's all I got. Definitely didn't get anything else from them today.
you click the link in the email and went to updates. Okay. I got nothing. I just, I just, you know, I'll wait till I see it in person from them. I'm good. Fresh baked covered it. Uh, all right. I, I just, you know what? <laughs> I'll figure it out when I, when I feel like I want to go back. You know, I don't know. It's just weird. It's weird. I know, you know, like miniature Missy here, she's, she's got to work there. Have they still told you nothing? Oh, Tiffany Lopez, you're here. Hey, cooking dinner. Yeah, you'll see. Uh, yeah, you'll see a replay. Um, yeah, Anna, uh, your tickets, you know, cause I did the option to, um, extend my, uh, whatever expiration date. Cause my, my expiration date, my expiration for my pass was June 5th. So I extended it obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, it's not showing up on mine, but it is showing up on my Disney world app. So they've updated it on the Disney world app actually. Um, but I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm not getting on a plane and going to Disney World. No thanks. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, so, um, you know, honestly, the only place that I, I'm really thinking about traveling to is Napa. Go see Vanessa. Go see all of my wine friends up there. Um, because it's just sort of like I can drive there. It's a it's a it's a long drive, but I can drive. I don't have to get in a on a plane. Um, but I can head there, uh, you know, cause I, I, I don't, I don't, but still do social distancing there. And if I do go to like wineries or whatever, at least like I can be outdoors maybe at them. Um, but that's kind of the only place that I would even think of going at this point. It would be a blast, Kaylee. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's it. And you know, what's been so fun um, is Brandon said, good job finding ways to have fun and stay indoors. And it, it has actually been fun finding ways to do that. And one of the ways has been connecting with all of these people up in Napa uh, that, that have now become uh, friends, which is really neat. Um, I've actually, I've made new friends during um, this that, you know, I don't know if that would have ever happened. Um, so that's been one of the nice things, uh, just connecting with people during this. So, um, but yeah, I think Napa is the only place that I really want to get to. It might be the only place that I travel to for the entire year because, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if I want to get go to like. I mean, I would love to go see my family in in New York, but you know, I don't know. Um. Oof, Missy, feel ghosted by the company. Good people, chill. Tiffany, you're a lot of your vineyards are doing. Yeah, I think every vineyard is doing tasting by appointment. All the email lists of vineyards that I like subscribe to up in Napa, it's all by appointment. Yeah. Uh, Josie, the waiting list and line for place are going to be three years long for a while. Yeah, it's just, it's going to be interesting. Tiffany uh, Sorgman, the local wineries are set up. Look weird. Yeah. I think that's just how it's going to be. Erica, I know you, you, Erica, you just traveled and, and, and that was, how was that? Kayla, you drove to New York. You did? You drove to New York? 
what what see i've never done it and obviously i'm from there and i've never made that that huge drive i've never done that i mean I'm, i've thought about it for like this christmas um but i've never done it how was that how many days did it take you Um, it has been a hor strange and horrible time, yes, but you are so right with fruitful in terms of building quality relationships, right? Fruitful like this wine. Huh? 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 <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh, God. Um, <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> um, what am I looking at here? Right, the chat. Okay. Erica, you felt good during your travels. That's good. It took you three days from Vegas, Kaylee. Okay. It's not bad. I mean, honestly, that's not bad. <clears throat> See, Erica, you were camping, which I think that kind of helps because you already are kind of distant. You know what I mean? Maddie, I couldn't agree more. Um, the live streams not only help you guys, they help me. Uh, um, I can't wait to travel as well. It is my favorite thing to do. Um, and I obviously can't wait to see my family again. It's really weird not seeing them for this long, but um, Yeah. You know, this time last year, I was like just a couple weeks away from going to uh, London. So it is a very big difference this year. I mean, I was getting ready for my big trip to Europe last year. Crazy. So many places I could stop and so social distance. You know, I mean, it's true. Um, it's uh, just tricky because I don't, I think it's my trust in other people. I, I, I think that's what it comes down to. But um, yeah. I usually get home um, two or three times a year, Josie, so, yeah. Uh, I just hope I can be home for Christmas this year. We'll see. Oh, you guys are in Vietnam last year. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. But I, I would love to go somewhere, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> oh, man. I would love to go somewhere. Um... A, 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 a getaway sounds great. <laughs> sounds great. <clears throat> but I just got to make sure that it's safe. So there you go. Um, oh, it's because I'm a Taurus. Is that why, Anna? Wait, why? The Taurus in me is making this uh, happen. Jansen, you go outside, no one's wearing a mask. Uh, so, the Wine Wednesdays making me want to get away to Napa. Oh, Ojai. I've never been to Ojai, but I've been to Napa. Isn't that crazy? Ojai is so much closer. DD. Thank you, DD. Here's a cheers to you.
Tauruses, we're awesome, but we don't trust easily. It's very true. <laughs> Can I go with the we are awesome mostly? But we do not trust easily. No, that is that is definitely the truth. That's I mean it's true. We are uh, we we we're, we're, we're yeah. We're something. has been on his speakerphone the whole time. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. He's talking about loans right now. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's the thing. Yo, Anne is so right here. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Anna B and I were born on the same day, May first. So we we are. Um, when we trust, yeah, we are. We are. I'm very loyal. That is very true. <laughs> oh man, this is so true. So good. Okay, um, I got a couple of minutes, I'm starving, I gotta eat. But um, here's what I wanna do. Uh, we wanna do a Vanessa like food wine pairing thing. Yes, oh, those birds are going crazy back there, cool. Um, we're gonna do that, right? Is there any other, uh, are there any other questions you have for Vanessa? Type them now. I'm also going to pop the wine club in once again, so you guys can see it there. Um, and I know we now have members of the wine club here that drink along with us. It's so cool. <laughs> One day, one, one, you know, one day we're going to be having a, uh, one day we're going to be having the Mr. Cheesy Pop wine. Just wait, it's coming. <laughs> um, one day. Will I do another sake tasting? Um, I would love to. I mean, Eduardo is so cool. So yeah, I could see it happening. Cody, how do you know what wines are we drinking each week? Uh, so I, when I get the shipment, I post them on Instagram. So like, um, that's how like uh, Tiffany and Maddie had them at home uh, for tonight. So that's a good question. Has COVID affected her work? Yeah. I, I can I think partly answer it and say that I think wine sales have been up. <laughs> so I think I know it like wine access I, I know has been like out of things um because everyone's home <laughs> just drinking <laughs> their wine now but I'll ask her about the, yeah that's a good question actually I'd love to know that too <laughs> Cody Maddie's sitting next to me in the couch <laughs> I love it. You guys are funny. Your CMs are guzzling. Me too. I'm going to have to fill this up with dinner, obviously. Do you guys see the color of this, uh, this glass, by the way? I'll take you inside here. Look how purple and, and uh, yeah, we're getting. How neat is that? Yeah. Right? That's really cool. Um, guys, thank you for being here. Um, if you have any other questions about uh, 
wine or anything relating to tonight, shoot me a message on Instagram and uh, hopefully I put out another video this week. I think I will. I think I will. We'll figure it out. Enjoy the rest of your night, guys. I'm going to go eat. Cheers to you all. Thank you, Anna. My, my May 1st buddy. That's right, Anna. Thanks for being here, guys. I appreciate you all. We're going to go out with a, with a, with a, with a full wine glass in, in your face. How about that? Ready for this? Ready? Ready? You ready? 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 ready, ready? Cheers. Oh. The wine, it's all in your face. There it is. Okay, bye guys. <laughs> Wait, no, there it is. Okay, bye.